Brilliant. It would be good to have uh, maybe one or two kids come and help me out this morning. Um, I've got a pick and mix bag here that we will look at in a moment, but it's great that we've got harvest. Um, and hopefully some slides will come up on the screen in a moment. And so we're here gathered together to think about giving thanks this morning. There's lots of things we could give thanks for. And harvest time is a great time to do that as we remember all things that God has given us. It's an opportunity to give thanks, and we think particularly about giving thanks for the crops. And that goes back to our British history, when we relied on kind of the agriculture farming to kind of bring income into our land, and so there were landowners, and they would have these harvest festivals to celebrate when a harvest was brought in, to give thanks for all the workers and those that have contributed to gathering in this harvest. And going back to biblical times, it was part of the kind of the system of giving thanks to God. There was two harvests mentioned in the Bible. And so there's festivals associated with both of those harvests as part of the Jewish people's worship to the God who created the universe and gave times and seasons and gave us food to eat and communities to be part of. So harvest is an opportunity for us to give thanks. And we've given an amazing amount of food here that will go to the food bank. And later on, we're going to take up a collection for the work of International Justice Mission. So we're thinking wider than just ourselves, giving thanks for our freedom and our health and all the things that go with where we are in our society and world today. But I wonder, kind of, do we really think about when we're thankful? Do we think about when we say thank you, do we just sometimes say it just because it's habit, it's the polite British thing to do, because we're, we're nice and proper and British, aren't we, quite often, and we would say thank you, um, but do we actually think about it and mean it? It would be great to have someone who could come and help me, but if not, I can do this myself. So we're going to take an item out of this bag. Eliza, are you going to come? That's brilliant. Thank you. So I want you to take an item out of the bag for me, and I want you to tell me what it is. You know what they are? Does Ray know what they are? Hot dogs. Hot dogs. So we're going to do a little bit of a game. So if hot dogs is something you would be very thankful for, then I want you to cheer. But at the same time, if it's something that you do not like, then I want you to give a boo. And we'll see kind of, it was interesting doing this at St George's, and we'll see what the results are here. So what do we think about hot dogs? Oh, I heard a few boos. That's very interesting. Do you want to put that down behind you? Ray, do you want to take another one out and tell us what it is? It's meatballs in tomato sauce. Meatballs in tomato sauce. Chicken meatballs in tomato sauce. What do we feel about that? One, two, three. Boo or, or cheer? <laughs> Fantastic. Next item, Eliza. Do you think there was more booze that time? Yeah. What have we got there? Curry flavoured noodles. What do we think about that? One, two, three. Yay. David's clapping at the front here. He's obviously a big one for curry flavoured noodles. Brilliant. Let's look at another one. Let's keep going. Chicken noodle soup. Chicken noodle soup. Apparently, if we're not feeling under the weather, chicken noodle soup's good. One, two, three. Yay. No. No. Eliza, no. We've got an opinion here. But some of us do like that. Next one. Golden vegetable rice. One, two, three. Yay! We're very thankful people. This is very good to know. Brilliant. Should we do one more? Should we do one of that one? What one's that? Sardines in tomato sauce. Sardines in tomato sauce. What do we think about that? Ray thinks more boos were heard that time. <laughs> you might be right there. <laughs> and let's go for a favourite one there, I reckon. What is that? Chocolate spread. Chocolate spread. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> it's really interesting. There's, we, I was going to say we might be slightly younger here because there's more cheers here. But like some people think that's too sweet and sickly, but sometimes it's a really nice treat, isn't it? Brilliant. Thank you, guys. I've got a few more things, but do take a seat, or you can stay around if you want. But we're thinking about how thankful we would be. So if I gave you, just take a seat if you want. That's brilliant. 
So if I'd sort of given you those things, how grateful or thankful would you really have been? And there's a mixture, isn't there, of how thankful we would be. Some would be really happy with everything that we were given. Some would be a little bit more, a bit discerning, aren't we? We know what we like, and there's nothing wrong with that. But it makes us think about, actually, if we were really hungry, what would we be thankful for? And we'd be thankful for everything, whatever we were given. When I went to Africa on a trip to Uganda, and we were learning a little bit about the different culture that we were going to go to, and we sort of were separated. So some of the group were put at a high table, and they were given a three-course meal, lots of lovely food. The rest of us were sat on the floor, and we were given bowls of rice. Now, I really quite like rice, so I was quite happy. It was really fluffy, and I was really quite satisfied with my bowl of rice. Um, but it's the, it's the difference, isn't it, between these people that were sitting at their tables with lots and lots of lovely food and those of us that were sitting on the floor with very little and thinking about, for some people, that would be their only meal of the day. It makes you think differently about what we can give thanks for and how grateful and thankful we'd be. In our story of, that was read out so beautifully by Bertie, thank you so much, we had this story of ten lepers. And... The scene is set where Jesus is going on his journey and he's traveling towards Jerusalem and he's going into this village. And when he goes into this village, there are people, these 10 lepers on the outskirts and they're keeping a distance from him. Now, leprosy was a really contagious disease and it was seen as an unholy disease. And those people were kind of outcast and outcast from society. They weren't allowed to go and worship God in the synagogues and in the places of worship. And so they were kept at a distance, kept separate. And as Jesus comes before them, they, they cry out and ask for mercy, for pity. It's interesting. I wonder what they expected. What did they think that mercy and pity would look like? And it's more interesting what then Jesus does, because he doesn't say, I'm going to heal you in Jesus' name, or like sometimes he would actually touch um, people and heal them. And he even has done that with a leper. But he says, show yourselves to the priests. Now what's really interesting about this is that in Leviticus, in one of the books of the Bible that talks about the different Jewish cleansing rituals, leprosy was one where you were kind of separated, but if you were seeking cleansing healing, then you would go to the priest, the priest would come and see you in the camp, and there were different rituals and cleansings that would take place. And so Jesus' answer to them saying, have mercy on us, is to go send them to the priests. And they do, they obey. I wonder if they were maybe disappointed or whether they thought, oh yeah, this is what happens, let's go. So they go on their way to show themselves to the priests. And then we read that on the way, they were cleansed, so they were healed, which meant that they could then re-enter society again, that they could go back to worshipping God and be part of the community But we don't stop at the story there, because the interesting part of the story is not the fact that they were healed, but the fact that only one came back and gave thanks. Because we're then told, as we read on through the passage, that one leper saw that he was healed, and he decided to return and go back to Jesus. And when he turned back to Jesus, he bowed down before him, and he thanked him. So he saw, can we point to our eyes? I feel like I'm in, in, in Sunday school teacher mode or primary school teacher, never was. But So he saw, he turned back and he bowed down and praised and thanked. I want you to think about, you, can, you could do it. We could get everyone to stand up, but I won't. But he saw, he turned around and he bowed, praised and thanked. And that was in response to the thing that had happened to all ten of them. But he was the only one who saw, who turned back, and bowed, praised, and thanked Jesus. And then interestingly, we're given this little side note that says, and he was a Samaritan. So this wasn't a Jewish man. This was a Samaritan, a foreigner. And he was the one that turned back, that saw what Jesus did, recognised what Jesus had done, and went back to give him the thanks and praise that he was due, that he felt he needed to give to the person that had healed him. It's interesting. 
this foreigner. And Jesus himself responds in this way. He says, we're not all ten cleansed. Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? I wonder what we sometimes feel and think. Sometimes in our lives, do we see all the good things around us and we take it for granted a little bit? I know with my health at the moment, I've definitely have taken that for granted in the past. It's something that I'm thankful for each day that I can kind of be upright, isn't it, sometimes? (laughs) But actually, do we give thanks to God for that? Do we thank God for all the different friends and family that we're part of, the different volunteer groups or work that we're involved with? Do we view that as being gifts from God? Do we see God at work through those relationships? Do we thank God for the food that we have? We can so easily go to the supermarkets, can't we? But it's coming more and more difficult for some of us to do that, to feed ourselves properly. Do we give thanks for the things that we have? But ultimately, as Christians, as people that believe that Jesus is the Son of God, the God who created us, who created the universe, who gives us all good things and provides for us, do we give thanks for what Jesus has done for us? Do we realise of his love for us on the cross? Do we realise his love for us in keeping this world and helping us to know more about him? Giving thanks can be just a rote exercise sometimes, can't it? But actually at the heart of it is knowing who we are in God, that God made us and loves us and wants us to grow in that love and knowledge and share that with other people. Amazing things to give thanks for Jesus And because of Jesus, our opening verse said, in everything, give thanks. In other versions, it said, in all circumstances, give thanks, for this is what you've been commanded to do. So actually, giving thanks is what we're supposed to do, supposed to be about. It's like on our label, our family inheritance thing, that we're supposed to be giving thanks for everything, every circumstance. And that's not easy, is it, in the ups and downs of life? That's the reality in the reality of seeing those that have and those that have not. But in all things, let us give thanks. It would be interesting um, if we do make that a habit. So at the end of each day, maybe think of five things that we can give thanks for. Can you think of five things? I'm putting you guys on the spot, Eliza. Is there one thing you want to thank God for? It might be family or food or a good TV show. It's difficult. Let's let's us all have a think. Let's just pause now. Let's think. It'd be great if you can do five, but let's just start with one. What's one thing we can give thanks for this morning? Family. Brilliant. Sunshine. Fantastic. Home. Yep, that we've got roofs over our heads, places to stay, rest, secure, safety. Jesus, yeah, because actually, if not knowing him, our lives have changed. I don't know, we've all got different stories of what Jesus has done in our lives, haven't we? That he's taken us in different directions. And actually, we need to give thanks for that, that realising that we wouldn't be where we are without him. There's lots of things that we can give thanks for. And so maybe let's start that. Let's make that a habit. Let's do that, have conversations over the dinner table or at night when we're kind of gathering into a sleep pattern, remembering to give thanks in everything. Because that one leper realised what God has done. He saw, he turned back, and he bowed down and thanked Jesus for what he'd done. And maybe that's something we need to take that up day by day, seeing what God is doing all around us, turning back to give him the praise for all of those things to stand very still (laughs) and giving him the glory that he's due because he made all things and we can give thanks for him so let's pray lord i pray and thank you for this reminder that you created the universe and the world you give us lots of good gifts help us to get in the practice of thanking you day by day remembering to give you thanks seeing you at work in the world turning back I'm praising you for it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.